Dear viewers, greetings. In this present video, we are going to see about differential interference contrast microscopy. In short form, it is called as DIC microscopy. Many biological specimens cannot be effectively visualized using ordinary bright field microscope because their images produce very little contrast, rendering them essentially invisible. A differential interference contrast microscopy is an excellent microscopy technique that introduces contrast to the images of the specimen which have little or no contrast when viewed by using the bright field microscopy. DAC microscopy was invented by French scientist that is his name is uh, Francis Smith in the year 1947 and further developed by the French physicist Georges Nomaski in the year 1952 as an improvement over the phase contrast microscopy. Uh, DIC is sometimes referred to as uh, Nomaski microscopy because uh, this microscopy was uh, developed by the scientist Georges Nomaski. A differential interference contrast microscopy is very best for visualizing the unstained samples and the images produced by this uh, DIC microscope optics have a distinct relief like uh, shadow cast appearance giving an illusion of uh, three-dimensionality. And next, advantages of uh, DIC microscopy over other contrast techniques. An advantage of using DIC microscopy over other contrast techniques such as uh, phase contrast or oblique contrast is that in DIC, the full aperture of the microscope is used. For example, in phase contrast, the annulus of the condenser restricts the aperture reducing the resolution of the image. And unlike phase contrast, DIC images are not disturbed by halo artifacts. Uh, some of the common advantages of the differential interference contrast microscopy over other contrast techniques are, first, the DIC produces high quality and high resolution images. And DIC shows good contrast. DIC can be used with the thick specimens and the DIC lacks the distracting halo of phase contrast and finally DIC can be further processed that is the video enhanced. This picture shows the image obtained from the DIC and the phase contrast microscope. The image A, C and E are obtained from the DIC microscopy and the image B, D and F are obtained from the phase contrast microscopy. Because here, the image A, C and E are obtained from the DIC microscopy and the image B, D and F are obtained from the phase contrast microscopy. This slide shows the image of DIC microscopy and the DIC microscopy have several important parts. It includes the polarizer, condenser, objective, objective specific prism, uh, no space with prism, analyzer and it also have the uh, specimen slides and vessels. These are all the common parts of this uh, DIC microscopy. The first part is the polarizer. The polarizer is inserted in the microscope train between the incandescent illumination source and the condenser. Uh, this component is designed to produce linearly polarized or plain polarized light which are necessary for the interference detection. And to provide more image contrast adjustment, some differential interference contrast kits use a rotating polarizer and a quarter wavelength retardation plate. And the contrast is perfectly adjusted. The image of the specimen will have a three-dimensional effect. The second one is uh, condenser or condenser prism or Wallstein prism or Nomaski prism. And this uh, condenser, condenser is a beam splitting prism which divides the polarizer light beam emerging from the polarizer into two beams. If the prism is separated from the condenser, the light beams are transmitted to the condenser. However, it is often incorporated into the design of the specialized condenser and these light beams are known as ordinary and extraordinary or specimen and reference beams. The next is the specimen slides and the specimen uh, vessels and it is one of the important uh, restriction of DIC is that uh, 
plastic vessels cannot be used due to the strain because they exhibit under uh, very crossed polars. For upright microscopes, uh, this is not an issue. Uh, but users of uh, inverted microscopes may consider using plastic vessels which have a glass insert of cover slip thickness and these are available commercially. And the next part is uh, an objective. Uh, theoretically, an objective can be used uh, but in practice, higher grade objectives like fluorite and upper chromate types are generally specified to benefit from the high resolution potential. In many cases, uh, phase contrast uh, fluorite objectives are chosen uh, permitting bright field DIC phase contrast and fluorescence observation with a, a single set of objectives. And next part is objective prism or objective specific uh, prism. Either adjustable or fixed mounted, uh, this upper prism recombines the separated beams into elliptically polarized light. Uh, like the lower prism, uh, this prism is formed by affixing two optical quartz wedges together. The wedges are cut differently so that one of them has its optical axis parallel to the prism surface and the other one optical axis is at the angle of the prism's flat surface. The next part is an analyzer. The analyzer is located behind the objective prism and is oriented perpendicular to the transmission path of the lower polarizer. And this is where the interference occurs that generates the differential interference contrast. The light that passes through the specimen, specimen will have a different refractive index uh, occasioned by the differences in the thickness of the uh, different structures and areas of the specimen. Uh, interestingly, if no specimen is in the place and both light beams enter the upper prism without any refractory differences, the effect of the lower prism is exactly reversed by the upper prism and the image field appears black an effect known as extinction. And this slide shows the working principle of the DIC microscopy. Uh, first, uh, the light passes through a standard polarizer and before entering into the condenser and produce a plain polarized light. And the formed plain polarized light enters into the DIC prism or the Wollstone prism situated in the front focal plane of the condenser the prism interact with the polarized light to produce two separate wavefronts uh, which are polarized perpendicularly to each other. They are termed as ordinary rays and the extraordinary rays. Uh, the furthermore, these two waves are separated by, by a very small difference that is the less than the resolution of the system. Uh, this separation is termed as shear and it is an important characteristic of the system. Next, the two wavefronts pass through the specimen and are retreated to vary extents in the specimen. And next, the light is now enters into the second DIC prism through the objective. And after entering, the setup recombines the wavefronts. If there has been a phase shift between the two rays as they pass through the areas of different refractive index, then elliptically polarized light is the result and finally and finally the light enters a second polarizing filter which is termed as an analyzer the initial polarizer and this analyzer form crossed polars the analyzer will permit the passage of some of the elliptically polarized light to form the final image all the remaining light will be blocked by the analyzer this is the working principle of the DIC microscopy. Next is uh, various applications of DIC. The first application is uh, visualizing unstained specimens. Uh, like phase contrast microscope, uh, DIC is a very useful tool for visualizing the unstained specimens. And this is uh, the clearly an advantage when observing living specimens such as uh, uh, small organelles, tissues or cells. In addition, uh, this DIC is also uh, effectively used in uh, special and if, uh, several specialized applications. As next, the locating the specimen or even the focal plane using the fluorescence microscopy or fluorescence illumination can be a challenge. Uh, DIC, uh, like phase contrast microscope, 
it can be used at a low illumination level for this task uh, but more importantly for indication uh, where in the specimen a label component residues are present and finally uh, DIC is used in metallurgy materials and semiconductors and producing good images of uh, surface features such as scratches advantages of DIC an advantage of DIC is that the specimen will appear bright in contrast to the dark background and this method can also take advantage of being able to use a, a full width condenser aperture uh, where originally a slit condenser had to be used to produce a thin vertical beam of light uh, this limited the amount of limitations that could be brought to focus on the specimens uh, the lower prism allows the user to employ the full condenser aperture by compensating for the phase difference of all the emitted lights and results in the brighter image and this system is relatively easy to incorporate with an existing bright field microscope uh, two of the shortcoming of the phase contrast methods are the fact that the specimen must be very thin and hollow in produced in a viewing field and next uh, no hollow effect occurs with the differential interference contrast microscopy and it can be used to, to produce very clear image of uh, thick specimens. It can also be used in uh, conjunction with the digital imaging system to add further definition to the image. Uh, differential, interest, uh, differential interface contrast imaging can be used in conjunction with fluorescence microscopy to provide a better fluorescence image and the pinpoint specific areas on a specimen before switching to the fluorescence mode to the further examination of the objects and finally a major advantage of the DIC technique is uh, examining the living specimens when normal biological process might be impelled by normal staining procedures uh, these are all the advantages of the DIC and finally limitations of uh, DIC a yeah, drawback of this type of imaging is that the uh, three-dimensional image of the specimen may not be accurate. The second limitation is the enhanced area of light and shadow might add distortion to the appearance of the image. These both are the limitations of DIC. Dear viewers, thank you for your listening and support.